we're kind of in the in this off and on, off again, on again series that I'm talking about with regard to relationships and family, because God's really been focusing us very intentionally on spiritual family and, and what that looks like and what we're, you know, what we want to experience, how that's going to grow. And so, and I was doing some journaling about this, this is probably a month or two ago. That's usually what the Lord does, right? I'll be sitting there and it's like, you know, what do you want to talk about? And I'll start journaling. And I don't know, I get some pretty good stuff sometimes. So um, uh, the phrase that he gave me was, heaven's invasion establishes heaven's family. And I'm not talking about, you know, our, our, the name of our thing. It's just when heaven invades, heaven's family gets established, which is so cool. And um, so he's, he's telling me that, that love is the foundation for four things. Love is the foundation for provision, right? For encouragement, for honor, and for respect. You know, that's the foundation for all those four things. And, you know, provision, when you think about provision, um, it's not just simply having finance and having, you know, material things. But you know what it is? It's having an abundance mindset. Do you have an abundance mindset or do you have a poverty mindset? Do you always worry about stuff, about your money running out, about your supplies running out, or something running out that you're gonna not have enough? If that's something that kind of, you know, kicks around in your head a lot, that's a poverty mindset. Because our papa has everything. Does that make sense? And so we can have an abundance mindset where we believe that all things are possible. Evie is a great example of what, you know, what that looks like. How about encouragement? Anybody here need encouragement? <laughs> I mean, listen, we live in a world of extreme discouragement every single day, right? Your, your people are saying stuff, they're doing stuff, and, and it can become discouraging. Um, but you know what we want here? We want to establish a family where you, you are, are basically celebrated for who you really are, right? Your identity. And, and we want to encourage each one of us, each other really, we want to encourage each other to not give up on going for our destiny. Don't give up on going for your destiny just because you're going through a rough time or there's just things aren't working out exactly, you know. So that's part of what we do is we encourage each other, hey, you know what, I believe in you. I believe in what God has spoken over your life and what he's got planned, you know, planned for you. And so we're going we're gonna to give each other that kind of, uh, of encouragement. And you know what? Honor is one of the most amazing things that we have in the kingdom. Because what is honor? Honor is celebrating you for who God says you are. You know? It's recognizing what he says about you and going, man, that is so awesome. I, I agree. I love that. I love that he said that about you. And so we, we celebrate uniqueness. Aren't you glad? I mean, where else are you going to go where, you know, we just can basically show up as we, you know, we don't get dressed up, we don't get, it's like, we're, we're here just to enjoy Papa, right? And so we celebrate our uniqueness, and then respect, oh my gosh, when I think of respect, you know what I think of immediately? I think of a judgment-free zone. Judgment, what does that mean? It means, you know what? I, I truly honor you for who God says you are, but if I don't quite understand a decision that you made, it's okay, because that's your decision. And I don't, I don't have the right to sit back and go, well, I don't know, it's kind of stupid, what the, you know, and mumble under my breath about, well, what the heck are you doing? If I have a question about something you're doing, you know what I need to do? Who knows? Huh? I can't hear you. Yeah, exactly. Have a conversation. Have a conversation. How about that? Right? What does that prevent, by the way? If I make a decision that anytime I have a question about you, I go and talk to you, what does that prevent? Huh? What? <laughs> How about it prevents gossip? <laughs> that too. <laughs> 
All right. So all these four things, this is what the Lord gave me. They combine to form a culture where identity, purpose, and significance are discovered and established. I love that. Come on. That's good. That's what we're doing here. We're establishing a culture where our identity and our um, our purpose and our, our significance are not only discovered, but they're established. You get freed up to do all that, right? So, um, so and, and that's all what part of, you know, the grace of God enables us to do that. So here's a few more thoughts. Um, spiritual maturity looks like a right relationship with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Spiritual maturity. It looks like a right relationship with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, I want you to think for a minute about, I want you to think about somebody else. Think about yourself. Think about before you really were solid in your walk with God, right? And how you would feel some kind of way like, oh, you know, maybe God's mad at me. Maybe he's disappointed. Maybe, you know, I, I, I know I, I must be doing something wrong. Right? This kind of thing is, is an evidence that we haven't yet grown up into the full maturity of sonship. Because when you know who you are as a son or daughter of the Most High, you don't worry about that stuff. It's like you've learned the truth that you've been fully and completely accepted and sanctified and, and, and redemptified and <laughs> is that even a word? But you get to understand your place in his heart that that never changes right and so maturity looks like that but you know what it also looks like it looks like a right relationship with family both natural and spiritual okay it it, it means that we're having the right kind of relationships with spiritual moms and dads and spiritual brothers and sisters and all of that now let's get real <laughs> it's one thing to get, you know, have a good relationship with Papa and Jesus and Holy Spirit, but ain't it another when it comes to dealing with flesh and blood? <laughs> Paul might have said we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but oh man, it feels like it. <laughs> I mean, doesn't it though? Come on, let's be real. And so we know that the enemy works to steal, destroy, and corrupt relationships have you figured that out that's what the devil does he works to corrupt and to steal destroy all these different things he, he does and so I was thinking about that concept itself and I'm saying all right Lord the enemy is at work to absolutely mess up our relationships with with one another and with the people that matter to us so what's the root cause behind that? He brought me back to a teaching that I have done maybe almost like two years ago. And what the Lord said to me was every issue, you got to hear me now, this is so important. Every issue you have with someone else, with another person, can be traced back to some aspect of the orphan spirit. Wow. Because the orphan spirit is that spirit that tries to pollute and corrupt and pervert your identity. All right? And so I'm going to share some things with you tonight that get you thinking about where you are at in terms of your journey of getting free from the orphan spirit. Okay? Romans 8, 14 through 16. i got to read a scripture to make this a legal message. So <laughs> here's, your, here's your scripture. Romans 8, 14 through 16 says, For all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of slavery leading to fear again, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by which we cry out, Abba, Father, Daddy. Right? The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. Now that's the truth. That's the reality of of our existence of you know this thing that we we've been brought into holy spirit absolutely will bear witness with your spirit that you're a child of god but you know what even with that 
if we have other ideas, if we have other beliefs, if we have other things that don't agree with what Holy Spirit's saying. Does that make sense? Right? How many of you... Well, I shouldn't say that's not right. <laughs> okay, moving on. Here's, here's how, the Holy, or how the orphan spirit... How the orphan spirit affects our relationship with Papa. You ready? It seeks to drive a wedge between my heart and my father's love. Think about it. The orphan spirit at its essence is a spirit of separation. It is a spirit that works to make you feel totally separated from Father God. And so it's constantly at work to try to drive a wedge between you and him. Again, how? Oh, you must have really blew it this time. He's got to be mad at you. He's got to be disappointed. He's got to be upset. Right? There's something wrong with you. Okay? He's always working to say things like that, whether it's through yourself, your own thinking, or somebody else that comes to you and say, what is your, you know, how could you do that? Okay? Number two, it tries to convince me that God is to blame for all my troubles and unanswered prayers. See, once again, trying to put distance between me and Papa. Oh, it's God's fault. You know, God could have answered that prayer. God could have saved so-and-so. God could have healed so-and-so. God could have, could have brought the money in when you needed it. It didn't come. It was too late. Whatever. Whatever the situation is, the orphan spirit will try to make you feel like you can blame God because he didn't come through for you. And we all know what? That God is always good. He's love. He's always good. Who's the one that steals, kills, and destroys? Okay? So we're not talking about how God failed. We're talking about well, what did the enemy do to mess things up for you? Let's get the blame where it belongs. Does that make sense? Right? The over orphan spirit, oh, this one's really interesting, causes me to look for answers and getting my needs met from any other source but him. Listen, we all have needs. We all have desires. But my choice is always going to be, well, who's going to fulfill that righteously? You know, am I going to allow Papa to take care of a need in my life? Or am I going to go out and find some other solution on my own to try to do that? See, the orphan spirit will try to make you feel like, well, God's not going to handle that for you. He's not going to, he doesn't care about that. You got to take care of yourself. You got to look out for number one. You know, go out and handle that thing. And, and, and we've all done that. You know what I mean? We've all done that. And that's, again, something that the orphan spirit is trying to do. It creates confusion and distance between me, God, and others closest to me. And we'll talk a little bit more about that with the next section. Oh, this is a big one. The orphan spirit drives me to perform perfectly and prove myself so I will deserve his approval and blessings. Orphan spirit will always make you feel less than. It will always make you feel like you haven't lived up to some standard, something that, you know, you didn't do right, that God is going to judge you based on that, right? How many of you can say with great relief in your heart that you are so glad that God no longer judges us based on performance? Come on. His love for us is not based on performance, whether what I do or what I don't do. Does that mean he doesn't care about what I do or what I don't do? No. He's a good father. And he doesn't want his kids to be stupid. I don't want my kids to be stupid and do stupid things. Neither does he. That's why he gave us wisdom, so that we would know how to live in the best kind of way. Right? Jesus, how about how it affects your relationship with others? Anybody like to know about that? How the orphan spirit affects your relationship with others? It makes it difficult to trust other people. This is what the orphan spirit does. It makes it difficult to trust others because you believe that nobody cares about you except you. I'm the only one that cares about me. I can't trust anybody. And you know what's interesting? As I've been, been working in this particular region now for the past 10 years in a very intentional way, I discovered pretty early on that the orphan spirit works in tandem with something that I've called the spirit of isolation. 
And the spirit of isolation combined with the spirit of the orphan spirit will absolutely cause you to say, you ain't knowing my business. I'm not telling you my business. And so what does that mean? It means I go through my business all by myself. And I end up suffering way more than I would have had I been willing to see well, who God, God who, who do you have for me? Who, who can I trust in your family that can walk with me? Okay? That's the orphan spirit. And, and this next one basically amplifies that. It's a dysfunctional, dysfunctional self-sufficiency, independence, and unteachability, un, un, being unteachable. That's what the orphan spirit does. It makes, you, it makes you try to just do everything on your own. I don't need you. And don't you dare try to tell me. <laughs> don't you tell me. Um, it makes it difficult to make commitments and to maintain long-term relationships. Because you don't trust people. So you're always looking for when's the next shoe going to drop. Okay. Let me tell you something. When I'm around religious people, I still have that problem. <laughs> What's the next shoe gonna drop? <laughs> What's you know? What am I? What am I gonna get judged because I did something that offended somebody? <laughs> okay. Fear of intimacy and vulnerability. Again, all speaking to you know the wall that I put up, where I'm not letting you in. So I'm afraid of really being myself and getting close to somebody. That's the orphan spirit. How about this one? Suspicion about people's motives. Well, they didn't really mean that. They weren't being nice. They really, you know, they were, there's something, they were going to do something to, to get me afterwards. You know what I'm saying? It's like you always, you always feel like somebody's trying to do something underhanded, right? And I'm not saying it couldn't happen. But that's the general idea. How about this one? Um, easily offended. <laughs> Orphans are easily offended. You know why? Because they don't know who they are. When you don't know who you are, you will absolutely allow somebody to mess you up by telling you what they think you are. And if you don't know who you are, and you don't like what they just said, oh, right? You get offended. So you want to kind of know where you're at in all of this? What's your offense level? How easily offended are you by people who do or say things that are wrong? Okay? No one's condoning their behavior. No one's saying, oh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. No, it's an issue of how quickly do you get offended, how deeply do you get offended. The more offended you get, the quicker you get offended, to that degree, you aren't secure in your identity. I've made this statement in the past, and I'll say it again tonight. By God's grace, my goal is to become unoffendable. And I'll actually tell you, I don't believe you can offend me. I don't believe there's anything you can do to offend me at this point, because I've learned that what you say or do absolutely has no effect on who I am as a son of God. And man, when you can get into that place of security in him, the freedom, the freedom is breathtaking. Because now you treat me nasty and I just simply make a choice to move in an opposite spirit. And I'll just smother you with kisses. Unless, of course, you hit me, and that'll... <laughs> Get away from me! <laughs> See, people do that, you know, because when they're really, really an orphan, and you try to get into their space, what happens? <laughs> it's like you're not getting near me. You can't do it. So offense is really an, is a, a way to, uh, to measure where you're at. And this goes along with it, is you reject others before they can reject you. You know? It's like, I, I think you're not going to be good for me. I don't know for sure, but I'm, I'm just, right before you even get, I'm rejecting you before you get even close. <laughs> just forget it. You know, right? Now here's a big one. Um, orphans generally have a distrust for leaders in authority. 
And the reason for that, of course, is that they've been burned by people who don't exercise true kingdom authority. You know, in the kingdom, Jesus made it pretty clear that greatness is measured by your level of service. Right? You want to be great? Serve. You want to be first? Be a slave. And unfortunately, that paradigm is not practiced very much in traditional church circles where you still have a corporate hierarchy with someone who says, I'm above you because I have a title and position. And you better do what I say. And so that kind of authority mixed with an orphan spirit is pretty deadly for the orphan because they get offended <laughs> when that happens. <laughs> when I, when I, it's funny, when I'm in a situation like that now with someone who has a position and title in a particular organization and they, they treat me in a certain way because of where they are, I just laugh, not in their face because I'm not going to be rude, but I, I chuckle to myself because it's like, okay, I, I see where you're coming from, I, I see who you are, it's, it's all right. Lord, help them, help them to see. <laughs> but it's just, it's kind of funny because I remember those days so well, you know. And it's been so nice to be, any, anybody think it's nice to be set free from some of these things? <laughs> I'm like, come on. All right, let me move quickly through the rest of these. Um, orphan spirit will, will make it difficult for you to make major decisions. Wow, you're so isolated, you're so, you know, by yourself that you can't find the wisdom that you need to move forward or to do certain things. And the reason for that is, you know what? God doesn't usually allow orphans to get too close to their ultimate destiny for their own protection. You know, God doesn't like things that get aborted, which means they die before they give full birth, you know, before they come to full term. And destiny is one of those things that he absolutely doesn't want to see aborted. So he's not going to really free someone who's got still the orphan thing to really go too far because you can't sustain it. You cannot sustain destiny until you're free from Holy, uh, from Holy Spirit. Oh, Lord. <laughs> until you're free from... Just pray for me, please, would you? <laughs> until you're free from the orphan spirit. Okay? There's a fear of making mistakes, of failing. Uh, there's continual striving to succeed and prove yourself. Uh, orphans feel unloved, unaccepted, unappreciated, insecure, abandoned. And there's little or no sense of belonging. All of these characteristics are what the orphan spirit looks like. Okay? And so, hopefully, as you hear these and begin to think about them and recognize where maybe there's still some of that going on in my life. Right? You can say, all right, Lord, I don't want that anymore. You know? I recognize that there's something going on here. I don't want to have this orphan spirit. I want to be walking in the full measure of my stature as a son or daughter of God. Anybody like that idea? Yeah? So if that's, if that's appealing to you, I'm just gonna invite you right now just to close your eyes. Lord, we wanna thank you right now in Jesus' name that we can absolutely reject this orphan spirit and receive you, Holy Spirit, to just take over. And Lord, I ask right now that every single symptom that's been exposed for the orphan spirit tonight, that Lord, you would just really highlight that where it needs to be highlighted. And then Lord, we just, we just give that to you. I, we lift it up. So Lord, take that. Take that symptom. Take that characteristic of orphan spirit because I don't want it. Lord, what do you have for me in exchange? just allow him to begin to speak to your heart tonight. I believe that as we worship, I believe that as we come into his presence in a very real way, Holy Spirit is going to begin to speak and minister to your heart and take you that next step into a place of complete recognition and experience of who you are as a son or daughter. And I just love that. Sorry.